Welcome to the class. In this class, we will discuss questions based on percentage increase and decrease. This topic is one of the important topics of percentage and quantitative aptitude section and is asked in almost all the competitive examination. So it is very important to learn the concept from this topic. And there are certain shortcuts that you need to know in order to solve these questions quickly. So, before solving the examples, we will first brush up all the very basic concepts of the topic percentage. And then we will see the importance of multiplying factors to solve such questions. So, now let's proceed. If there is X percent increase in A, that means in the initial value of some amount A, if there is X percent increase, then that value becomes A, the initial value plus A into X divided by 100, that is A into 1 plus X divided by 100. Similarly, if there is X percent decrease in A then, the value would become A minus A into X divided by 100, that is A into 1 minus X divided by 100. By applying these formulas, for example, if there is 10% increase in 100, that means the initial value 100 becomes 1 plus 10 divided by 100 times, that is, 100 into 1 plus 10 divided by 100 that is, 110. So 100 multiplied by 1.1 directly gives 110. We can use this for any other value. That means if there is 10% increase in 100, then the increased value can be achieved by multiplying 1.1 with the initial value. Similarly, if there is 10% decrease in 100, then after applying this formula the initial value 100 becomes 100 into 1 minus 10 divided by 100 times, that is 0.9 times. So if you multiply 100 to 0 0.9, you will get the 10% decrease in 100, which equals to 90. So what we have seen actually in these two above examples, that there is a corresponding multiplying factor, with which if you multiply the initial value, you can directly get the final value after required percentage increase or decrease. Multiplying factors of some of the percentage increase and decrease had been shown here. For example, for 10% increase, we have already seen the multiplying factor, that is 1.1. For 20% it is 1.2. For 70% it is 1.7. For 100%, it will become 1 plus 1, that means 2. For 200% it is 3. For 5%, it will become 100 multiplied by 1 plus 5 divided by 100, that is 1.05. For percentage decrease, say 10% decrease, the factor is 0 0.9. For 20% decrease, the factor is 0 0.8 because here you will be getting 1 minus 20 divided by 100, that means 1 minus 0 0.2 that is 0 0.8. For 70%, it is 1 minus 0 0.7, that is 0 0.3. Similarly for 90%, the multiplying factor will be 1 minus 0 0.9, that is 0 0.1. We can get similar multiplying factors every percentage increase or decrease. Now, Let's use these concepts to solve this question. First of all, read this question. The question says, length and breadth of a rectangle is increased by 20%. Calculate the percentage increase in its area. Now we all know that area of a rectangle equals to length x breadth. We will solve this question with a method called unitary method. This method is widely used to solve such kind of questions. In unitary method, we consider length and breadth both to be 1 initially. So if length and breadth is 1, 
then the area initially is also 1. Now we will increase the length and breadth, as given in the question. So, if length is increased by 20%, as given in the question, so obviously, for 20% increase, initial value has to be multiplied with 1.2. So it will become 1.2. So the new length is 1.2. Similarly, since breadth is also increased by 20%, so it has to be multiplied with 1.2. So, this also becomes 1.2. So the new length is 1.2, and new breadth is 1.2. Then, what will be the new area? It will be, 1.2 into 1.2 that is, 1.44. So, 1.44 is the new area, and the earlier area was 1. So from 1, the area has become 1.44. Then what is the percentage increase in area? Percentage increase in area will be the difference 1.44 minus 1, divided by 1, 1 is the initial value, into 100, that comes out will be, 0.44 into 100, equals to 44%, that is the answer. We can also get this value directly from this, because as we have seen in the multiplying factor, if 1 has increased to 1.44, it signifies that there is a 44% increase. So from here itself, we can get, there is a 44% increase in area. So we see that, with the help of this unitary method, we can calculate percentage increase in area. There is another method of similar type. Let us call it method 2, second method. Area is length into breadth, as we know. In this method, we do not assume the length and breadth to be 1, rather, we assume the length and breadth to be 10 initially. So, initially, the area will be, 10 into 10, equals to 100. If there is 20% increase in length, that means 10 has to be multiplied with 1.2. 1.2 is the multiplying factor, to get the new length, which is 10 into 1.2 equals to 12. Similarly, breadth is also increased by 20%, this will also become 12. So the new area will be, 12 into 12, equals to 144. So earlier, the area was 100, now the area has become 144. So now anyone can tell, if 100 has become 144, then definitely, there is a 44% increase. So we have seen that we can use these methods to calculate the percentage increase in area. We will see more examples in the next class.